Hi, welcome to another video. So this one's a continuation for the touchscreen and introducing PWM. So if I show you first of all, I've got the slider down the bottom. Uh, this is marking the X position and the Y position. So you see I come up and down. I've got an on off switch here for the PWM and more importantly utilizing the color intensity. I've got three boxes here obviously so this is the red, green and blue and I'll show you how to do it in a code. So this is the, obviously red, green and blue gives you white. This box changes down here. I also want to show you how I stop this box flashing when you're not touching it. Right so if I in, knock off the red we're just left with blue and green. Knock off the green just left with blue so you can see vary the brightness of the blue from 0 to 255 so that's obviously no colors on now so if go for the green 0 to 255 again and then the red and what I've done I, I've taken off this switch up here but if I reset the microcontroller these are stored in the random access memory. If I reset the controller, it gives me the last color that was set. So now I've introduced some blue, reset it. You can obviously put a button here and clear the screen. So obviously all three colors on are white. You can make whatever colour you like, so a bit of red, a bit of green, a bit of blue to get sort of violet purple. Knock off the blue, there's a green. So all the red and all the green gives you yellow reset microcontroller. So I'm resetting it, not turning it off. So you, you pick thousands of colors, whatever you want. Works really well. Just looking at the uh, color balance on this camera and on this TFT I've got on this camera, the, that yellow looks lighter but it's actually darker not sure it'll come out like on youtube so that's a bright yellow still looks light on this camera But to uh, plug this camera into the charger, it sits on the base, so can't use the tripod anymore. But, well, not for a minute. Anyway, so back to this PWM. If I zoom you out, so it's turned on at the moment. Well, I'll turn the light off so you can see this LED. So it's a 10 volt LED. I've got it wired to the microcontroller using a FET and using the PWM. You can see it gets brighter and dimmer. It doesn't go completely out because there's still a small voltage there and these are sensitive to small voltages so but what you might have heard if I turn the light back on I've got a relay across the LED and when the relay cuts in, when there's five volts across the LED, this fan cuts in. You might be able to hear the fan as well, so I'll turn the light on so you can see it. So I need nearly full PWM to get this fan to cut in. As you can see, I'm up here at the limit. Turn it down. The light stays on, the LED stays on. 
but not enough to bring the fan in. I've wired it this way because rather than wire two ports up and two PWMs, I've also got the this start and stop wired up to initialize and start the PWM and stop the PWM. So if I stop it, you can see an LED goes off, start it, comes back on. If I wind it up, then the fan will come on. So again, looking on this camera screen, the screen looks white from where I'm looking, but it's actually pink. So if I give you turn off the blue. All the colours look brighter, so I don't know if that's the white balance on this camera. It's a Sony camera. This yellow. You don't have to slide it, you can obviously just touch the bottom, turn off the red, turn off the blue, or turn on the blue, turn on the green. Loads of options available with a touch screen, no switches, no extra wiring. It's quite good once you get used to it. I'll zoom you in for a second just so you get a closer view. So that's the PWM output, X and Y, and the colour variations. Knock off the red, knock off the green, just turn on the blue. Or just green, or just red. Or obviously all three to get white. Reset the microcontroller. Here we are. Right, in case some of you aren't familiar with the PWM, I'll put the signal up here on the scope. So this is off, this is turned on, and that's off again. And then there's the next pulse. Right, this is running at 4.5000 kilohertz, as you can see in the corner. And that's the smallest pulse with this program running at the moment and winding it up you can see the pulse obviously gets wider so this is a pulse width modulation so we're varying the width to there where it's nearly on full it's still got still off for a small section but messing about the code you can obviously adjust this pulse width modulation and control fan speeds, lights, something like that, heaters, wired up to the mains via a Triac SCR control mains appliances. Right, so here's the code, same as the other day, SPI 16. I'm dividing the clock now by 600, so that's 80 megs divided by 600. Slave select disable, SPI data. At the end, SPI clock idle to high, and then SPI active to idle. Here's various chars and ints and floats. Some are used, some are not used. Right, so before I forget, I keep on putting notes off to the side, and I forget to mention them. So the PWM on the PIC32, or this particular PIC32 microcontroller, is part of the output compare. So you have to look at the output compare reference manual and figure out the PWM from there. So, so output compare one, this is the pin numbers for the 64 pin and pin numbers for the 100 pin. I've got the 100 pin. Output compare one, two, three, four, five. And you see there, and then PWM channels, and I've put the ports at the end for you. So PWM channel 1 is RD0, RD1, 2, 3, and 5. So I'm initialising the PWM. 
delay for 100 milliseconds to let everything start up. So you can see I'm setting the brush. Now this is what I want to talk to you in a minute about, setting the brush. So this enables the brush, this one here, and this enables the top to bottom fading of colors. So here, for example, I've got blue and this hexadecimal code is, is a dark red. So because I've got one here, the top to bottom is enabled. So it's going to go from blue to red and I've got a one here. So this is enabled. I'll talk to you in a minute about this number one. So you can see I'm filling the screen. JB's color touch panel, set the pen to three, which is pretty small. And you can see I'm setting the brush. These are for the rectangles on the right to control the colors. So red, green, and blue. And then these are the two circles. Green for on, red for off. But you can see here I'm starting the green, starting it with olive and ending in green. And similarly with the red, red at the top, purple at the bottom. So you get a differential color between the top and bottom. So then the while one loop. Now for those of you who've seen my matrix video, you'll understand this. This is the TFT RGB to color 16 bit. So what you'd normally have in here is the intensities of the red, green and blue in hexadecimal numbers or, or, or binary 0 to 255. But you can see here, I've got these chars, red, green and blue chars. So it's 0 to 255 only. And I've called this, this is an int TFT color. So what happens in the program, like for example, when I move the red slider, it's changing the value of this red here, then the green changing the value of this from 0 to 255 and blue 0 to 255 there. And I went through this in the matrix video and color intensity, I think I called it. Then this is the important bit. When I touch the screen, RB0 equals naught, then X equals one. Otherwise it equals naught. So remember this bit. So now I've got normal ints for the X position, Y position, same as the other day. This is calibrating my X position from a float to an int. Then I'm drawing the pen. This is that box at the bottom, the bottom rectangle, where I'm setting the duty cycle. So it's drawing a line, and the line varies depending on where I press the panel. Then these are various if statements. So depending on where I touch, different things happen. So for example, between these coordinates on my touch panel, if I slide up and down, the red is equal to X position one. That's assuming I'm in line with the Y. So because I'm starting on the right hand side of the screen, it's easy to work out naught to two five. So everything less than two five six, so naught to two five five changes the red then the green so when I'm touching those coordinates where the green box is the green changes and last but not least the blue changes so that's how I've done that so this blue for example becomes the X position one and scroll back up the top that's where that TFT color, TFT RGB to color 16 bit red, green, and blue. So we're altering these jars. These are the two circles. I've drawn the circle already outside of the while one loop. Drawn the circle, and if I touch it, you see RD1 turns on and PWM start. And if I touch the red circle, RD1 turns off and PWM stop. Right, so if you saw my video the other day, the box with the red line was shorter, but it was constantly flashing. 
So what I sussed is, well, I sussed this enable bit. Didn't fully understand it, I just always put one, sort of parrot fashion. I thought if I change this to an X, and when I press the box, this X becomes a one, and when I'm not pressing the box or pressing the touch panel, this becomes a naught. So what happens, you get a nice steady picture, whereas the other day it was flashing. So before I go back to the screen, set in the pen again, and this is a rectangle at the bottom. So to remind you from the other day, without touching the panel, this box, it was in the middle, and it was constantly flickering. If I let go, it was still flickering. And so it's updating these numbers constantly. So this box is being drawn in the while one loop. And that X I've just put in the TFT set brush. So now when I take the pen off the screen, it's not drawing that box anymore. So it stops flashing. But yeah, it's still in the while one loop, still looking for everything to happen. And so now you've seen the code. So there's the on off buttons and there's the sliders. I'll try and keep you zoomed in a, in a bit. So look, turn the blue off in that horizontal plane. So if you look at this Y, I'm staying in a certain position in the Y, but moving from naught to 255 for the blue. Same for the green and red. So now if I reset the microcontroller, those values are stored and it becomes blue. So as in red, green, blue becomes white. Hopefully that makes more sense to you now. Right and finally, this is the touchscreen, exactly the same as the other day, haven't changed it. So if RB4 underscore bit, so that's the pen interrupt on the touch panel, driving RB4, that goes down to zero. It knows I've touched the screen. Touch panel chip select equals zero, and that's the SPI writing and reading. So X position and Y position, and then chip select equals one, and that's the end of the program. So, So hopefully you found this helpful, um, but get some better effects with the touch panel. Quick like if you like it. Thank you for watching.